Hello everyone. So today we are going to see the power systems to unit 3 in that lecture 4. So that is we are having the line connected to the cable and line connected to the T junction and line terminated through a capacitance. So these topics we will see in this lecture. Okay. So in the last class we have seen that line connected or line terminated through a resistance. So, what is the behavior of that traveling wave when the line connected to the resistor or at the ending of the line we have connected the resistor, what is the behavior of that line, what is the refracted wave or refracted voltage, refracted current, reflected voltage, reflected current and incident voltage and incident currents. That is V and I are the incident voltage and incident currents and V dash I dash represents the in reflected voltage and reflected currents v double dash and i double dash those represents refracted voltage and refracted currents so those equations we have seen so in that equations if i consider r is equal to infinity so here if i consider r tends to infinity that means at open circuit that is receiving end is open circuited so, if I consider R is tends to infinity means the receiving end is considered as a open circuit whether it is satisfied the equations or not of the open circuit condition. So, we have seen that open circuited line. So, whether those equations of refracted voltage, refracted current and quotient of those refracted voltage and refracted currents which are satisfied or not we are going to verify with the help of this R tends to infinity. So, if I consider R tends to infinity, the coefficient of refraction for current waves that is 2z by R plus z we have and I am substituting in the place of R infinity. So, 2z by infinity plus z if you see here, 2z by infinity plus z you are going to get. So, in that z is equal to sorry R is equal to infinity I am substituted. So, 2z by infinity means something by infinity is nothing but it is 0. So, we have got the coefficient of refraction is 0 and coefficient of refraction for voltage wave so just substitute in the place of R substitute the infinity just take uh, in the denominator take the R as a common you are going to get 2 by 1 plus. So, here you are going to get 2 by 1 plus z by R. So, in the place of R I am substituting infinity 2 by 1 plus z by infinity means z by infinity it is 0 then 2 by 1 means 2 you are, you are going to have that is coefficient of refraction for voltage wave is 2 and similarly coefficient of reflection. So, equation of coefficient of reflection for current wave is minus R minus z by R plus z. So, in the place of R I am substituting infinity that means just take the R as a common from the numerator and denominator then you are going to get minus 1 minus z by R by 1 plus z by R. So, in the place of R just substitute the infinity means 1 minus 0 by 1 plus 0 you are going to get that means it is a minus 1 value. That means coefficient of reflection for open circuit line or open ended line that gives minus 1 coefficient of reflection that is that is reflected back with negative sign and coefficient of un, uh, reflection is unity. So, that is what we have got and coefficient of reflection for voltage wave. What is the coefficient of reflection for voltage wave in the open circuited line? That means we have got a positive sign, it is reflected back with positive sign and a voltage wave is having a unity a coefficient of reflection. So, whether it is getting unity or not we will see that is R minus z by R plus z just take R as a common in the numerator and denominator then you are going to get 1 minus z by 1 plus z 1 plus z by R then you are going to get if you substitute R is equal to infinity then 1 minus 0 by 1 plus 0 that gives here 1 that is coefficient of reflection for voltage wave is 1. Okay. And then, and then if I substitute, if I substitute R, is R is equal to Z, Z whereas the coefficient of reflection will be 0. So, so here if I substitute the R is equal to 0 then what happens sorry R is equal to Z then what happens. So, in the same way whatever we have done in the open circuited line that R tends to infinity means infinite resistance at the open circuited line you have got. But if you want to get the zero resistance that is at the short circuited line you are having the zero resistance that is 
if you substitute r is equal to zero in the below equation, that is coefficient of refraction for current wave and coefficient of refraction for voltage wave. If you substitute r is equal to zero in this, we are going to get the same coefficient which we have got in the short circuited connection. So that is you can calculate. Okay, right. Then. Whereas the coefficient of reflection will be zero when R is equal to Z. If I substitute that R is equal to Z, whether I am getting zero or not, we'll see. We'll see. So here the coefficient of reflection for current wave that is minus R minus Z by R plus Z. Just substitute R is equal to Z. If I substitute R is equal to Z in that equation, then minus Z minus Z by Z plus Z. That gives. Z minus Z means zero. For voltage wave, if you if you consider R minus Z by R plus Z, that is zero. The coefficient of reflection, the coefficient of refraction for current wave, that is two Z by R plus Z. That means if I substitute R is equal to Z, two Z by two Z, we are going to get that is one. The coefficient of refraction for current wave is one. And for voltage wave, it is 2R by R plus Z. So if you substitute Z in the place of R, then you are going to get 1. And the next topic is line terminated to a cable. So here, line terminated to a cable means just I am con connecting overhead line to the underground cable. So if I connect overhead line to the underground cable. So a wave which is traveling on the overhead line, which is going to be enters into the cable. So if that traveling wave enters into the cable, it looks into the different impedance. So first on the transmission line, it is having some impedance. When it is entering into the cable, cable is having the capacitance effect. Due to that capacitance effect. It is going to be have different impedance. So, because of that different impedance, it suffers reflection and refraction at that junction where you are having the two connection, that is line and which is connected to the underground cable. So, at that junction, you are going to have the reflection and refraction. So, what is that reflection voltage? What is that refraction voltage? What is that refraction current and refraction current? We'll see. So, if you see here. We are having V double dash. V double dash is equal to what? V into two Z two by Z one plus Z two. That means if you calculate those equations, you are going to get V double dash is equal to V into two Z two by Z one plus Z two. And I double dash is equal to I into two Z one by Z one plus Z two. So here Z one is a Impedance of the transmission line and Z2 is the impedance of the underground cable. Those two impedances are different. Okay. So V dash is a V dash is a reflection voltage. Reflection voltage V dash that is equal to V into Z2 minus Z1 by Z1 plus Z2. So I dash is equal to what minus V by Z1 into Z2 minus Z1 by Z1 plus Z. Okay, so that is what the reflection current equation. And then, as we know that the impedance or uh, surge impedance of the overhead line, I can say the surge impedance of the overhead line is 400 ohms, and for cable it is 40 ohms. That is already seen in the last. Class. Okay, so if I substitute these values. In that equation, uh, in that equation of voltage refraction, then V double dash is equal to V into two Z two means Z two is the impedance of the underground cable, and Z one is the impedance of the transmission line. Just substitute two into forty by four hundred plus forty. So here. For two into forty by four hundred plus forty means that gives two by eleven volts. So that two by eleven volts is nothing but it is about twenty percent of the incident voltage. It is about twenty percent of the incident voltage. That incident voltage represented with voltage V. Okay. So it will reduce the magnitude of the voltage wave. The steepness is also reduced. Steepness means it is a sudden rise in voltage within short duration of time. So that steepness is also reduced because of the capacitance of the cable. So you are having, as I said, that 
there is a capacitance for that underground cable so that underground cable capacitance will affect the impedance as well as will affect the steepness of the wave so steepness is also reduced for that voltage wave so that is a advantage here and while connecting the overhead line to a station equipment through a cable it is important to note that the length of the cable should not be very short if i connect the very shorter one that should not be shorter than the expected length of the wave so if i connect the short shorter wire that means what happens means so the successive reflections are going to be available at the junction which may result piling up of the voltage and the voltage at the junction may reach the incident voltage that means voltage is going to be decreased okay okay right so here the next topic is reflection and refraction at t junction so you are having the bifurcated line that means the line is here we are connecting two lines at the single terminal that is z1 is a main transmission line from that main transmission line we are going to have the two lines z2 and z3 is the impedances of those two lines so here the line is divided into the two lines which are having the impedances of z2 and z3 actual main transmission line is z1 so if the line is going to be bifurcated what is the effect of this refracted and refraction reflected and refraction voltages and currents at that particular junction that is what we are saying as a t junction okay so here the voltage wave is traveling over the line with the surge impedance of z1 and when it is reaches the junction it looks into the change in the impedance that means there are two lines the single line is bifurcated as a two lines then these two lines are having different impedances if these two lines are these two lines are having different impedances then definitely the traveling wave will face or looks into a different or change in the impedance so with that effect the voltage wave whatever which is reached at the t junction which will cause or which will suffers from the reflection and refraction of the voltage so let us consider that reflection and refraction voltages that is v2 double dash and i2 double dash and v3 double dash and i3 double dash which are the voltages and currents which are traveling in the lines having the impedances of z2 and z3 respectively so that is v2 double dash and i2 double dash those are nothing but refracted voltage and refracted currents is the line which is having the impedance of z the same way for the v3 and i3 okay so since z2 and z3 from which are going to be form a parallel path as far as the surge wave is concerned v2 double dash is equal to v3 double dash that is equal to v double dash so here as we know that refracted voltage equation that is v double dash is equal to v plus v dash that is nothing but refracted voltage is equal to incident voltage plus reflected voltage so here you are having the two that is v double dash that is equal to v plus v dash and here we are having the currents current equation i is equal to what v by z1 comma i dash is equal to minus v1 by z1 why i have considered minus v1 by z1 means see here we have we know that at the open circuited end or short circuited end any one of the wave out of these two waves that is voltage wave or current wave any one of this are going to be reflected back with negative sign so here i am considering the current wave so that current wave is reflected back with negative sign that means you are going to get i dash is equal to minus v1 by z1 so in the same way we are going to have the i2 double dash that i2 double dash is equal to v double dash by z2 and i3 double dash is equal to v double dash by z3 so just substitute i plus i dash is equal to i2 double dash plus i3 double dash because i double dash is equal to what so the i double dash is nothing but it is a in refracted current in the z1 and i2 double dash and i3 double dash it is nothing but the refracted voltages which are the lines of the lines which are which are having z2 and z3 impedances okay so so here i double dash is equal to i plus i dash and substituting which is equal to i2 double dash plus i3 double dash so just substitute these values that is currents i i dash i2 double dash and i3 double dash 
So I2 double dash is nothing but V double dash by Z2. I3 double dash is nothing but V double dash by Z3. Because these refracted currents which are related to the Z2 and Z3 impedances of the lines. So just substitute these values in the equation 1. Then you are going to get V by Z1 minus V1 by Z1 because I1 I dash is nothing but minus V dash by Z1. Okay, V by Z1 minus V dash by Z1, which is equal to V double dash by Z2 plus V double dash by Z3. So just substituting V dash is equal to what? V double dash minus V. Or V double dash is equal to we know that V plus V dash. Just I am taking V dash equation so that we are going to get V double dash minus V. So here. You are going to have V by Z1 minus V double dash minus V by Z1. Just I am substituting in the place of here V dash. In the place of V dash, just substituting V dash is equal to V double dash minus V. So if I substitute and solve the equation, then you are going to get V double dash is equal to 2V by Z1 by 1 plus 1 by Z1 plus 1 by Z2 plus 1 by Z3. So that is what the refracted and reflection voltages at the T junction. Okay, right. So, if you see the line terminated through a capacitance, if I connect the capacitance at the ending of the transmission line, then what happens? So, here let us consider there is a DC voltage I am considering here, that is voltage V and there is a switch S and there is a impedance of the line that is Z and you are having capacitance, that capacitance which are connected at the terminal or ending of the line. So, let us consider the DC surge of infinite length travels over the long transmission line which are having a surge impedance of Z and it is incident at the capacitor or incident on the capacitor. Then the refracted voltage for that, if I consider the Laplace equation of that refracted voltage that is V double dash is equal to 2 into 1 by Cs by Z plus 1 by C s into V by s. So, I am just considering in the form of Laplace equations. That means, here you are having C, right, capacitor and Z, Z is the imprint. Okay, C means 1 by C s, we know that. So, I am calculating just voltage across the capacitor. That means, so, here yes, voltage across the capacitor means the impedance I am calculating 2 into V 1 by C s by Z plus 1 by C s into V by S. V is the total voltage. Total voltage into same impedance by the total impedance that is what the voltage division, division rule at the capacitor. So, if I calculate the voltage division or if I applying voltage division rule at the capacitor, then you are going to get this equation that is V double dash. V double dash of S is equal to 2 into 1 by C s by Z plus 1 by C s into V by S. Okay. V double dash of S is equal to 2 V by S into 1 by C s by Z C s plus 1 by C s. Just if you solve this equation, then you are going to get V double dash of S is equal to 2 into V that is into 1 by S minus 1 by S plus Z 1 by Z C. That is just ta by taking the partial fractions of that above equation that is V double dash of S 2 V by S into 1 by Z C by S plus 1 by Z C. That is a partial fraction of that equation. If you, if you take the partial fractions, then you are going to get 1 by S minus 1 by S plus 1 by Z C. Why I am taking the partial fractions means it should be in the form of 1 by S plus A. So, 1 by S minus 1 by S plus A means you are going to get the V double S. If you take the inverse Laplace transform for that equation, then you are going to get V double dash of T. So, that V double dash of T is equal to 2 into V into 1 minus e to the power of minus t by z c minus a t 1 minus e to the power of minus a t is the Laplace inverse Laplace transform for the 1 by s minus 1 by s plus a. So, if I take the inverse Laplace transform then we are going to get this above equation. Okay. So, these are the incident voltage and voltage across the capacitors. So, incident voltage I have considered as a DC voltage. So, we are going to get the DC voltage like this and there is a voltage across the capacitor means that is gradually increases again it is going to be constant. So, since the terminating impedance is a not a transmission line here, it is a capacitor here. So, therefore, V double dash of S is not a travelling wave, but it is a voltage which is appears across the capacitor. Okay. 
so if we see the summary of this lecture so in this what we have seen is the traveling waves which are which are flowing or which are traveling on the transmission line and when it is connected to the cable and if i connect the transmission line to the cable it will suffer from the two parts that is one is a reflection and another one is a reflection refraction and reflection that is going to be available at the junction and the next one is the refracted voltage is going to be 20 percent of the instant voltage because you are going to have the capacitance effect due to that capacitance effect the refracted voltage is going to be reduces to 20 percent of the voltage that is instant voltage so here a voltage wave v is traveling over the line with the surge impedance of z1 and when it is reaches the junction it will looks into the impedance change that impedance change suffers the reflection and refraction okay so with this you are going to have the completion of this line terminated to a capacitance then we'll see the next class right thank you everyone thank you for listening this class